Let me quickly tell you what's coming up on the program this morning. Going to be talking to our sister Shirley Richards, attorney at law, former head of advocacy group Lawyers Christian Fellowship. Now, she's been writing about what she is bringing to our attention as a possible underlying motive for the review of a constitution. Now, you heard, and we played that here two weeks ago, I think, that the Minister of Legal and Constitutional Affairs, Marlene Malahu Ford, in her 2022-23 sectoral debate presentation in the House of Representatives, announced that a constitutional reform committee, which would include representatives from the government, from the parliamentary opposition, relevant experts, and the wider society, is going to be appointed to ensure Jamaica's smooth transition to a republic. So we have that announcement. Attorney Shirley Richards is saying to us, hold up a bit. There might be some, while this is needed, Jamaica needs to be removed from the monarchy and uh, that she has no problem ensuring that there's a smooth transition to a republic but that she's cautioning that there may be some underlying hidden agenda by the government in this wide overarching review of the constitution so i'm going to talk to her attorney at law shirley richards in a you know in a, in a few minutes about this she's coming up at around seven then later on we go live to south africa now i'm sure that you've seen the videos they've gone viral of the massacre, the massacre of Africans. They are saying sub-Saharan Africans, aren't they? They are saying black skin, dark skin, darker skin Africans. In Morocco, coming from from uh, Mali, from Chad, from Sudan, from uh, Cameroon, from all across Africa, trying to get into Spain. And we know why that's happening. So they're calling them migrants also. So there was a massacre of Africans. And that border between Morocco and Malila. Now what we must understand about Malila is that the news we're hearing that says that our African brothers and sisters were trying to get to Spain by crossing that border when they were massacred is that this place that they're calling Spain is actually Africa. It's on the continent of Africa, colonized by and still colonized by and somehow claimed by and allegedly owned by Spain. So it is Spanish territory. It's not on the European continent. It's on the continent of Africa. This is what we must understand. And listen to how they couch the news, the reports. That is the only one of the one of two areas that shares a land border. Two one of two areas on the continent of Africa that shares a land border with Europe. These two areas they're talking about are really on the continent of Africa, but colonized by, and still, somehow, in 2022, allegedly, or supposedly owned by Spain. One of the things that made me cry, one of the things that made me bawl, so when we first heard the news was 18 Africans who were 
massacred on that border between Morocco and Malaya. Well, now, this morning, we're waking up to the news that it's 47. Now, you'd have seen the videos. All those dead bodies are not dead bodies. Deliberate speak. Lying on the ground, being beaten, kicked, clobbered by Moroccan and Spanish police. Who are they and who are we? If you're coming from the Ukraine, you're refugees. And we'll take you in. Spain has taken thousands. England, they've got them even in the palace at Buckingham Palace. You know, they've got them everywhere in private homes. Italy, Germany, they're refugees. Unmelanated people who are fleeing Ukraine. They're refugees. Of course, they're refugees. So who are we when we try to access our own land? (laughs) Who are we? We become migrants. And we're beaten to death. So later on, we're going live to Spain to speak with my brother, Aboy Unfobea. He was at a meeting last night because there is uproar, uproar in all parts of the world, actually, against the brutality that we have seen and that we're seeing the treatment of Africans when they try to get into Europe. You know, they are, Af- our African brothers and sisters are there and are trying to get there because you were here. We're talking about continental Africa. And this is our Saba stories. So we watched and we saw the massacre of our African brothers and sisters. Massacred only because they are black. We can argue about that. It's one of the things that made me ball. So we're going to go to Spain later on this morning to speak with my brother, fellow journalist, Dr. Abo Nfubuya. He was born in Equatorial Guinea. He lives and he grew up in Spain. He's a Pan-Africanist journalist, a political analyst, a writer, editor, lecturer, an expert in history and Afro thought an activist for reparation. He headed the Spanish Pan-Africanist delegation in Durban, to Durban in 2006, and he called the first march for black reparation on Columbus Day in 2010 in Spain. He led the, the march before the Spanish Parliament, the approval of the only... As a matter of fact, he went before the Spanish Parliament and led the approval of the only black reparation law... In 2014, he was a member of the Spanish Committee for the Afro Decade, ECOSOC Foundation Vida. He's co-founder of black organizations such as the Spanish Section of the New Black Panther Party, the OEUA, the United States of Africa, the FOJA, Pan-Africanist Federation, and the fourth international Pan-Africanist, Gaviesta Cimarron, currently present in Mexico, Chile, Bolivia, Portugal, Equatorial Guinea, Spain, Brazil, Ecuador, Dominican Republic, Colombia, Nigeria, and Ghana. He's a professor of Pan-Africanism, Black Power, and Afro-feminism. He also founded the radio Voice of Africa, Uhu Africa TV, and Reparacion Africana, an online newspaper of Pan-Africanist reference in the Latin of African world. My brother is an activist. In 2015, he convened the first Pan-Africanist Press Congress. As a journalist, he collaborates with the main Spanish media, Hispan TV, El Espanol, Distrito TV, The Voices of African Radio, and others. 
He has also founded or promoted dozens of African media, including Radio Voice of Africa, Afrotown 1990 Magazine, GEA Magazine, Black Africa, Omawale, Wana Africa, African Cultures, and many, many more. He's also the author of several books on black liberation. Malcolm and the Generation, Hip Hop 2013, Wager Shimpano 2017, One Africa, One Nation, 2006, and Gavi Demo and Black Consciousness 2015. Afrofeminism, 50 Years of Activism by Black Women in Spain, 1968 to 2018. And we could go on and on. He really is no stranger to the Africa Forum. He's a fellow journalist and a brother in the struggle. He's been watching, covering, and attending the meetings, the press conferences, and so on regarding the massacre of 47 Africans on the border of Morocco and what they're calling Spain. We don't want to be the mouthpiece of that lie. You see, so we have to be careful <laughs> how we even report on this story. Also going to be talking this morning to my brother, Ras Wayne Rose, Dr. Wayne Rose, research collaborator at the Smithsonian Institute of Natural History, board member of the Anniversal Development of Rastafari. He's there in St. Lucia, going to be talking about the upcoming celebrations, events around the celebration of the Earth Day of His Imperial Majesty, the Emperor Haile Selassie. All roads are leading to St. Lucia this year for those celebrations. And of course, IRFM will be there covering all of that live. We speak this morning to our brother, Dr. Wayne Rose, who is on the ground in St. Lucia. We continue our discussion on Ubuntu pedagogy. Going to be talking again with our sister, Dr. Alicia Blackwood, a teacher for over 22 years, uh, international speaker and educator and who has shared her expertise with teachers at the University of Central Florida, Botswana, Namibia, and Johannesburg, and an African-centered curriculum and instructional specialist, working with private schools, public schools, and homeschool families by helping to infuse culturally relevant materials into their curricula in the USA, in Africa, and also in the Caribbean. She's one of the USA's leading experts on Ubuntu pedagogy. This morning we're going to be looking at Ubuntu and discipline. Remember we told you that our book is divided into segments, of course. And so the next segment we're going to be looking at is discipline. Uh, teaching the spirit of Ubuntu is what we talked about last week. We also looked at her story a little. And this morning, we're going to be talking about Ubuntu in context, Ubuntu and discipline. We're looking forward to that. Now, I'm going to tell you one of the other reasons why I bawled <laughs> um, in producing this program. You know, let me take a quick break. Let me take a quick break. I believe in a Jamaica with no guns. I believe in a safer Jamaica for you and me. The time brought to you by the office of the Prime Minister is... 6.51, you're inside of the Africa Forum. It is Running African. Thank you so much for joining us. I was telling you, one of the other things that caused me to, 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 to ball... Um, in producing this program, it's a long time that happened to me, you know, because I, I, yeah, I, 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 I kind of very cold and <laughs> when I'm producing for the Africa Forum, and I, I, I protect myself, and I've been doing that as a journalist all these years. I learned very early on in the day not to take on what I was researching, but somehow it crept through and it fell through, and and, and I fell through the cracks. But here's the thing. So. We're looking, there's a word that we use in Jamaica. Some of us use it over a hundred times per day. It's a word that is just in the lexicon, it's just in the everyday talk. All of us use it. Matter of fact, all our uno use it, and me use it too. So that word is uno. Uno. 
Now, I've, had, I've been doing this program for a long time. I've had many, many discussions on Ubuntu and uh, have had uh, many scholars come through talking about Ubuntu and so on from South Africa and otherwise. But I spent some time this last week because my brother Tautau, who is in South Africa, started writing about it, looking at the word Uno. And what I found was phenomenal. And then I started saying to myself, well, you know, uh, I can't believe that we had we had it, that we have it, that we've been saying it, that we've been saying it. And in the earlier days, right up onto, say, 1990s, we were living it here in Jamaica and many communities. There are some communities that where we still live it. So I called my sister in, in the UK. She's a teacher herself. And she she's doing she's uh, the co- the founder of the black education Net- educators network so i called her and i said listen so I'm, I'm looking at this word and i'm seeing where it is widely used in south africa and there's a meaning for it south africans use it southern africans use it i want you to check into this for me because i know you're working with the Shona and the, the, the belly now, right now. So check into this and, and call me back. No, it didn't take her long. It was two minutes at the most. And she said, Goose pimple, feel me. Goose pimple, fool me. Cold bomb, fool me. I'm going say, what? <laughs> she, said, she said, so she's been talking to people she, she, she know. And... Um, from Southern Africa, Zimbabwe, from the Shona and the, the Belly and so on. And she said it, she didn't take her long to ask if they know the word Uno. And they were quick, they wrote back to her quickly to say, um, it is Shona. It is widely used in Zimbabwe and it means this. <laughs> Not this, this, I haven't told you what it means yet. I know that some of you already know because this is no news to you. You've been doing your research. I've been in this space for a long time. I, I've been looking at African retentions and so on. I, I know a lot of the African retention were that. I really applaud the work that Professor Maureen Warner-Lewis and, and, and all of them have done. I don't know why I just never come upon the word UNO as being as significant as it really is. Um, there's another term, kunumunu, unumunu. Kunumuno that we use. Now, we use that term as being derogatory here in Jamaica because you know how it goes. Everything African, somehow, once we have come through the Ma'afa, becomes negative for us. So we left the continent of Africa and those who enslaved us. You know, we talk about children of the Ma'afa. Well, those who enslaved our ancestors ensured that they made our words bad words or derogatory words, derogatory terms. And so a term like munu, for example, unumunu or kunumunu, if you will, kwashi, kweko or kwaku or, you know, kojo. So our names, even our names, our day names, um, lebombo, um, which is a mountain which now gone away unless you're going to lick down the mountain in a South Africa. There are some words that came from South Africa with us, from Southern Africa. We focus a lot on West Africa. And this is why I said to you that we claim the entire continent of Africa. We claim the damn thing, the whole continent of Africa without apology. North Africa, South Africa, West Africa, East Africa, in between Africa, Rona Africa, because we are the children of the Afar. And no amount of, uh, no amount of uh, DNA testing is going to place us anywhere apart from continental Africa. We are the children of the Afar. We are Africa. So we claim the whole thing. And it's important for us to claim the whole thing because when you look at those words that have survived, 
in our everyday speech, such as unu, kunu, munu, such as le bombo. These are words that came with us from Southern Africa. You can't move the mountain. There is a mountain in South Africa, a beautiful mountain, where the Lebombo stick um, was bone was found, where the women carved into those bones of the animals the first known mathematical problems, if you will. It really was, as many have said, them connecting their humanness back to the universe and the multiverse and how they calculated, for example, their humanness to the cycles of the moon. And that calculation carved into the bones of the animals. They call the bones the Lebombo bones. They have said, and, and these are the scientists and the Western scientists, and you can Google that, who have said that it's the oldest form of mathematics that they know. They know as far back as they can go before Mesopotamia, before Kemet, that there were the women of the Lebombo Mountains. Now, so, so I'm saying to you that these mountains are real mountains. Them names saw from the beginning of time, before time, beyond time, and within time. And so that word came with us from South Africa, we understood that somehow they made it into something else and we are afraid to say it. Then there's also, of course, UNU. UNU, we use that word every day. And what I found out why I bawled is that we were using it and we continue to use it in the right way. <laughs> we're using it in context. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to South Africa to speak with Thao Thao this morning. Yes, I cried. I cried when I was doing the research on UNO because I cried for what we have lost. I cried for what we're losing. I cried for what we don't know but what we have. I cried because we have it and we do not know that we have it. I cried because we're saying it every single day but we do not know what we're saying. And so when that reality hit me, I, 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 I got up, I walked around and the tears flowed. There's another reason why I cried. And, um, well, I'm not going to do an interview about it this morning. I'm going to talk about Patrice Lumumba. And I'm going to talk about, a little bit about, the fact that they have buried his tooth. And that happened last week. And that is why, another reason why I cried. Burger King taste rules your way is now a minute after seven o'clock. We want to go to the phone lines to speak with my very first guest and my special guest this morning. As I have been saying, we uh, are going to be talking to attorney at law Shirley Richards. And as we told you earlier, uh, Shirley Richards has been writing about. Uh, the announcement made by the Minister of Legal and Constitutional Affairs, Marlene Malahou Ford, in the 2022-23 sectoral debate presentation, in which he talked about the uh, overalling. Yes, thank you so much. In which he talked about the Constitution. Remember, we, we spoke about that a few weeks ago. We play the clips and everything. We're not going to play this morning. But she did say um, that she'd set out the work to be done by the committees in very broad terms, specifying, among other things, that it will involve, at this stage, the conduct of a thorough and comprehensive review of the 1962 Constitution. That, she said, included the 2011 Charter of Fundamental Rights and Freedoms, as well as recommendations for reform made through the various constitutional reform commissions and committees in the past. Ultimately, she said, to implement 
an ambitious reform agenda settled by consensus. Attorney at law Shirley Richards is saying, hold on a minute. There might be a hidden agenda here. She joins us on the phone lines now. I want to thank you so much, uh, Shirley Richards, for joining us inside of the Africa Forum this morning. She's a former head of, advo- of the advocacy group Lawyers uh, Christian Fellowship. Good morning, uh, Shirley Richards. Good morning, Mr. Kabooth, and thank you for having me on your program. Right. I welcome you. Welcome you to the space. I read the report in the Observer, I think. I didn't see the letter, but of course the Observer did a very good job of uh, pointing to some of what you said, right, in terms of how you're viewing this. First things first. Uh, What are your thoughts, though, on the point the minister made that the government is about to ensure that that there's a smooth transition to Jamaica becoming a republic. Your thoughts on that? I have no problem with that at all. Mm -hmm. All all I'm asking is this. Why is it that it's going to involve um, and basically an overhauling of the constitution? I have no no problem with smooth. Um, going over to Republican status. I have no problem with that. But why do we have to go through all of this um, thorough review of the Constitution? To what end? I, I, I am left to ask, to mm-hmm. what end? All right. Help us to yeah. understand what this thorough review is. Um, and, uh, many of us are not legal minded. We hear the we hear the the announcement by the minister, and he, cautious optimism is what a lot of us are viewing it um, with. But what, what from from what she said, what is your understanding of what the, how wide and over overarching this review is? Well, she said it's going to be an ambitious agenda. Mm-hmm. Um, recommendations for reforms made through various constitutional reform commissions and committees in the past to ultimately implement an ambitious reform agenda. Mm-hmm. Uh, which sounds to me, which suggests to me that it's more than, you're looking at more than just becoming um, a republic. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that is concern, of concern. And what are the parameters? What do you hope to achieve? You know, so... Mm-hmm. I think it seems to me that there is much more to this overall of the Constitution mm-hmm. than the whole matter of becoming a republic. Right. So you think there's, there, there, there are many other hidden issues, agendas, um, hidden here within that, this whole talk of Jamaica becoming a republic? There could be. I, I'm not saying for certain mm-hmm. the fact that you're doing more than you need to do makes mm-hmm. me wonder why you're doing more than you need to do. And specifically, you point to the Charter of Rights. Yes, ma'am. All right. <laughs> Help us to understand that. So this is a document which came into effect in 2011. After many years of deliberation, many years, at least 13 years, maybe more, mm-hmm. of deliberation, um, this is a document which sets out all the rights of citizens and so on, and the duties of the state towards the citizen and duties one to the other. You Mm -hmm. you know? Um, Included in that document, because we saw how a lot of countries were interpreting human rights and how judges were quick to how judges were quick to, to include in human rights what some of us regard as a false notion of human rights to include to include um, abortion, to include burglary, um, to include even same-sex marriage. You know, um, mm-hmm. submissions are made to the government, and the government then put in certain clauses within the charter, which would make it clear that the charter is not involved, um, the charter is not intended. The clauses in the charter are not intended to go um, to those areas. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. 
And so, you know, these areas have come under attack. Mm -hmm. Locally and into these clauses have come under attack locally and internationally. Mm -hmm. And so we are left to wonder if a part of the agenda, Mark, you know, I do not know, I'm not saying this is it. Yes. But we are left to wonder if a part of the agenda could be get, getting rid of these clauses. And you're saying, and, and, and the observer is quoting you, the letter was sent to them, you're asking, is this all a ploy? to get rid of the clauses, which includes um, that clause that you, you referred to, to protect marriage. A number, to, yes. to be, a a number of clauses. So, so to protect yes. marriage, to protect the life of the unborn and the, and the Bogri law. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you, you, um, <laughs> all right, your, your concern is that it, it's quite likely that the, these, these are clauses that will be removed in this whole process of ensuring that Jamaica becomes a, a republic. Um, this is this is very serious. We we missed some of this, right? Um, you're pointing us here. How likely do you think that this will happen? What what? Because here you have written a letter. Um, you're, you're you're with us this morning, and I thank you so much for that. It means that you think that this is serious enough to bring to the public, and we ask you to come on. We're glad that you that you that you accepted our invitation. But how serious do you think this is? Likely to happen. I have no inside information. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, if you need to become a republic, it's a specific job. There are some specific clauses. Mm -hmm. Just deal with that. Mm -hmm. you, you know why go further? Mm -hmm. It leaves it, it leaves the door open to suspicion as to what else, what else, what are the other aims and objectives of the exercise? Mm -hmm. You know. Yes. And, and so, because we know of the hostility towards Jamaica in, in terms, uh, and Jamaica has come under pressure from other Jamaica and other developing countries have come under pressure from these big countries um, regarding these issues, mm -hmm. then we are left to question. <laughs> as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, the observer is quoting you by saying, what is also interesting and ironic, you say, is that whilst we're looking at ridding ourselves of the British monarchy, our government is at the same time finalizing an agreement with the European Union, along with other African, Caribbean, Pacific countries, which, if finalized in its current language, would eclipse the current involvement of the British monarchy in our affairs. But you're saying it is swapping out one for the other. It is another form of colonization you see happening here. The new ACP EU agreement, which is pending, well, new and pending. Um, there's a pending ACP EU agreement. This is a partnership agreement. It, it is taking the place of the Lome. People, people my age group will remember um, how vocal and how, uh, how vocal Prime Minister Michael Manley was in the 70s regarding the Lome agreement. And then there was a Cotonou Agreement. But now this is a new one, which is much wider than the previous agreement. You see, the previous agreements had to do with trade. Mm -hmm. Especially the, the Lume had to do with trade. Trade yes, yes. arrangement between the ACP and the EU. No, this agreement, <laughs> I, I mean... Is unprecedented in in terms of its extensive coverage. You, you, you're looking mm -hmm. at yes, trade and development, public administration, statistical systems, data protection, non-proliferation of weapons of mass destruction, war crimes, terrorism, violent extremism, ex illicit trade in drugs, cyber security, cyber crime, law enforcement, education, health, food security, water. Social inclusiveness, youth, wow. culture, investment, financial system, environmental protection, climate change, marine resources, human rights, democracy, gender equality, peace, security, migration, remittances, human trafficking, among other subject areas. So in every, almost every single aspect of Jamaican life, you said the anticipated birth of this involvement in the EU in Jamaica's affairs 
which will be ceded to the European Union, is strikingly reminiscent of the role that the colonial office played Absolutely. in our nations in the past. So it's an, wow. Uh, it, it's beginning to sound like that. I'm, I'm telling you the truth. But we are, we are not paying attention to this. So thank you for, join, for, for, for drawing our attention to this. Um, how do you, well, you say pending, but how do you see this working out? How do you see, wh- wh- where do you see this going if there is no... Um, outcry if, 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 say, the opposition, for example, is more or less silent on this, isn't it? Yes, but thankfully there are other countries, I mean, like some of the African countries, um, there are groups there who are very concerned as well, and there mm-hmm. are diplomats there who are also very, very concerned about it. This is a 20 years treaty, you know, 20 years. Mm-hmm. It, it, you know, mm-hmm. um, it, it was supposed to have been signed before. In fact, it has been initialed, but not finalized. It was mm-hmm. supposed to have been finalized in June. Um, our little group, I belong to a group, Jamaica Coalition for Healthy Society, and we wrote to the Prime Minister and the Minister. We wrote, let, let me be clear, we wrote to the Minister, I'm almost certain it's to the Prime Minister as well, from last year. Mm-hmm. We only got a response this year. You know, we wrote mm-hmm. last year, July. Well, we got a response on about me also. Mm-hmm. And that response was not to our mind. It, it was not a fulsome. It hadn't showed a detailed analysis of mm-hmm. the issues. What, what, you were you, what were you especially concerned um, with? Okay. So, for example, well, firstly, the breadth of the thing. Why are you entering in, into an arrangement with, <laughs> with another nation, not just another nation, a block of nations. European Union. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> to what end? We, mm-hmm. we know about, I'm, I'm, you know, we, we know that there are grants and, and I'm sure there are benefits, not to say there are no benefits, you know, mm-hmm. there are financial, economic benefits of, of, of having some type of arrangement. Mm-hmm. But why do you need, why do you need to um, enter into an arrangement cons- you, you know you basically it, it, inviting mm-hmm. control of your society inviting the EU to, to control your society it, I find it staggering mm. you know mm-hmm. I find it staggering mm-hmm. and especially and, and so at the same time no, we're thinking of we, we are talking about um getting rid of the monarchy mm-hmm. and having a republic um, pub- republic instead. But at the same time, on the other hand, you're entering into this relationship with the EU mm-hmm. which would basically see, allow the EU to be involved in all, in the a wide mm-hmm. area. In a, more active, in a more active way, beca- in a more active way, would you think? Because because here, the, 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 the head of state being the monarchy is one thing. Um, the uh, and I know what happens in the courts and, and so on, and it is really integral. But you're saying um, with the, 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 the agreement that the government is entering into with the European Union, it, it, while it, it, it's, it's looking like the colonial office, which, which is suggesting yes. to me that it is, it is more active and would be more active even than what we currently have with the British monarchy as, as head of state. I think so, ma'am. I, I, mm. I, they, you know, interestingly, the observer had not printed my letter. Why they did print the letter and allow people to... I to, thought about uh, it. ...to comment for themselves. I do not know. Please send us a copy of the letter. Please send us a copy of the letter. It's, 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 okay, our, it's our fault that we didn't take it from you before I, I did this interview. I thought I'd find it online because the observer had said the, the letter was sent to them. Yeah, I haven't seen the letter. No, it's uh, not there. It's, I searched for it. But I said... Yes. It, 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 it will eclipse the involvement of the colonial office. Oh. Because, in fact, we don't have much at, at this time. Oh. Uh, um, you know, so mm-hmm. this e- ACP-EU partnership agreement, if finalized, could eclipse the role of the colonial office, especially, um, certainly no, certainly mm-hmm. in time, but to remember we are ruled directly by Britain. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, through yes. the colonial office. Yes. And I'm just saying it's strikingly reminiscent yes. of the so, role the colonial office used to play. So we really and need at to this pay point, it would eclipse the role of the monarchy. 
in, in, in our society. Wow. And, uh, can you send me that letter, as I said before? We just, we, 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 and I'd, I would like to talk to you again. I know that you're moving on to church now, but I'd really like to have a longer conversation with you once we have read the letter and also once we have looked again because you're pointing us to ask questions of the Minister of Legal yeah. Affairs and Constitution regarding the the um, the Charter of Rights, the of Fundamental Rights, oh, that's 2011. One of the things you're saying is that this was just 2011. So why would you need to include that in the overall review of a constitution, considering that it's just the other day? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And, and you... Mm-hmm. You know, um, yes, we, we, you know, we have a one-pager on this ACP EU thing, and mm-hmm. we also did that open letter to the Prime Minister. So there, there is a lot Mm-hmm. that um, you could show on and, and share with your listeners. Yes. My, my thing is this, we need, to keep, we need to keep our eyes open. Let me tell you one of the problems with the ACP-EU. So it references human rights over a hundred times in, in the various mm-hmm. clauses, but it has not documented the, um, a definition of human rights. Now, EU is a powerful, a powerful block. You know, mm-hmm. um, the rest of us, African, Caribbean, and Pacific nations, although we are we are the greater in number, mm-hmm. they are they are the, the powerful. Yes, you know, they, they are the party. Yes, in, in the whole treaty. Yeah, obviously they are part of the G seven. Mm-hmm. It's going to it's going to rule. Mm-hmm. It, mm-hmm. You know, but there is no definition of the term. Uh, what kind of what kind of leverage? What, yes, it's interesting. So, what kind of leverage does Jamaica have in this um, agreement? And, and we asked that question when we saw Jamaica entering into the agreements with China. Now, little by little, we're finding out that we really didn't have much leverage in our, <clears throat> in our relationship uh, um, with China, the agreements we, we, we signed with China. So it'll be interesting to see how this unfolds, but we can't allow it to just unfold without making our voices heard. And what you've done is to say to us, pay some attention because while, while, while you're distracted, and rightly so, <laughs> paying some attention to crime and violence and so on, there are other things happening. We, you know, it was cautious optimism, as I said, when we heard the minister announce the overall of the constitution, looking at removing, putting Jamaica um, as a republic, making Jamaica a republic. But we didn't understand, it seems, all that that came with that, including the the overalling of it of a charter of rights and i'm i'm really concerned about that i'm paying some attention to it you have pointed out to some of the issues within that including including same sex marriage including the bogry law and i think we really need to pay attention if we're going to talk about this then we must have a discussion about it it can't be well, I'm, I'm small questions, yes because you know it, it it's wide open and you're saying why yes yes what end Yes, we should have an open discussion if this is something that is about um, to happen. Uh, mm-hmm. Shirley, I, I'm going to talk to you again. I hope that, you, and I thank you for making yourself available because I know that was short notice and you have to go <laughs> off to church. But w- once I've read the letter and I've yes. gone through some more of the information coming from the minister herself, I will um, I'd, I'd, I'd want to have you back to take All some right, questions. Right. Thank you so yes. much. There are others who are more articulate than you can speak on these topics. Maybe you could send me your email address, your producer. But thank you so much. Yes, we'll, we'll, yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Shirley. Take care.